Good morning, folks. We'll have a number of articles to hit today, including the first results of the Northern Sky Super Flare study. Let's get started with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were pretty quiet again. The active regions on the south are underperforming, but the solar wind is offering a bit of interest right now. On the right side of the top panels, which contain the solar wind data, you see that just this morning we're getting a solar wind impact. It is minor, but working all but the phi angle at the same time right now. Sharp but modest magnitude variability. We'll be watching today as you see at the bottom right, green bars are higher than they were in the last few days, so we are getting a touch of pressure in that solar wind. Folks, there's an interesting piece out of the Science Journal today that fairly tried to lay out modern black hole science, pumped up the observations and theory to their fullest extent, and then happily reminds everyone of the major problem. Relatively and quantum mechanics debunk each other at the most important scales, the ones that matter. They simply don't agree. And this is as big a problem for black hole science as pretty much everything you've seen on the Sky Scholar channel. Up next, we have the continuation of an ongoing electric current approach review that seeks to reframe the Sun-Earth relationship as a power supply, transmission, and dissipation system. Even in the theory's infancy, it already better explains numerous phenomena witnessed by scientists, including nearly every particle forcing or electromagnetic coupling event between the Sun and Earth, for geomagnetic, technological, and climatological purposes. The power supply is obviously the Sun, the transmission is in the light energy, the particle flux of the solar wind, and the interplanetary magnetic fields, with those particles organized into current sheets, shock waves, and electric currents. The dissipation is in the aurora, and in the atmosphere, and in the crust. This is where I begin to take issues with studies like this, and ones on the moon where they studied the thermal events, the burning of material, and conclude it couldn't possibly be from the sun, because, for example, the solar wind and solar flares we see aren't strong enough to work the moon, or in this case, close approach to the sun wouldn't work Ryugu, so they blame its burning on its parent body. Studies like this one not only fail to include the real power output potential of the sun, but they ignore the electric induction and ohmic heating and arc discharge modulation potential of that material. Folks, it was via the Southern Sky Survey that we confirmed the super flare power of sun-like stars in the galaxy. They saw a tremendous number of flares, with some exceeding the power of most small nova events we've seen. Here's the northern study, and it is now generally understood the sun's 1859 Carrington event is about 100 times weaker than its full blast flare, and the strongest one they saw was about another 100 times stronger than that. At that level of energy, there's really no way to know if it was a super flare, micronova, mass loss event, or a dwarf nova, whatever they're calling these things. These dwarf nova are weird creatures in their own right, by the way. While there aren't many supernova in the galaxy, there are thousands of these smaller nova going off all the time. Good article here identifying and classifying tons of them and also reclassifying others. There are various kinds of miniature dwarf nova, various levels of very low output energy. The sun's maximum flare definitely exceeds many of the tiny nova events seen around the galaxy, so when I tell you to watch the evidence in the next disaster series, you should take it seriously, especially since it's not just the science lining up, there's a cycle of evidence lining up, and we're due again. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, we're under 10% of the supply left for Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. New book pre-order is on pause because quite a bit of the supply is spoken for already, and we're not going to order another one. It's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.